Hello my friends and welcome back to the Troll Universe tutorial series. This time I will cover the basic of building. Well not so basic but kind of you know um, to the level where you can build something like this. This is my um, so called small large ship and well I'm gonna show you what you need how to build it and all the tricks and tips and uh, everything you need to know about the building. Before I'm gonna show you all the tools and stuff, the most important thing, press F1 by default, click on building and then check what you need to do in here. Building introduction, la 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 la. And here are the parts list, which is the most uh, important thing to know. Hovering vehicles, it gives you the part list, what you need. These are the parts you need for the hover vehicles. These can't fly, they just hover over the, you know, the surface just for land vehicles like speedsters and stuff. They can fly a little bit, but um, yeah, without the wings they don't go anywhere. Well, technically, yeah, you can fly with these vehicles if you put enough wings and stuff, but okay, let's move on. Atmospheric uh, flyers, these are normal like planes and stuff, and again, the part list. Uh, I don't know why you need a space fuel um, tank for it, that's not necessary. But this is the part list for uh, atmospheric flyers that you can fly in the atmosphere. Then we have spaceships, these fly only in space, you can't go into the planet with them. And then you have interplanetary ships which can fly everywhere. This is what you uh, actually want, like there's no point making anything else. And to mention that uh, you don't really need the rocket engines, even though they are very useful and they come in handy, but they're very expensive to make, they need uh, rare materials and so on. So. To start off, first of all, you need the core unit, which is not listed in here. You need the um, core, where is a static construct. Um, yeah, it doesn't even tell, tell in here. So to check where you get the core unit, press uh, K by default, it's the crafting. Take off this button in here and type in core. That's all you need. And then we check in here, core units. These are all the core units. Dynamic means it's for a vehicle, uh, ships, hovers, whatever you want. And then the space ones are the ones that you can deploy in space, space vehicles. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between them. A space core unit is used uh, for sp oh, space stations and uh, bases outside of orbit. Okay, never mind. These are static units that can be placed in the space. And then we have static core units, which are for planetary surfaces, which you just deploy on the planet. So, these units are for the base on the planet surface, these units are for the um, base in uh, space, and these units are for all kinds of ships and uh, moving uh, constructs. So, depending on how far you are in the game, I assume if you're watching this tutorial, you can't ma uh, buy or make more than an XS or S core unit, the dynamic one. It doesn't matter if you're gonna build your first base or a first ship, the method is still the same. So, if you don't want to buy it from the market, which is a J by default, and we can just um, type in core again, or core unit. There we go, and if you want this one, you click on it, and you can sort it by price, see they're very cheap, or by distance, whatever you want to sort it by, and then you can buy it. But remember, you have to physically go to that marketplace. You can also set market as destination and see where it is. It's very important because if you buy something from the market, it doesn't automatically appear in your inventory. You have to physically go and get it. However, if you wish to craft one of these, whatever the part is, I have seen a lot of people in chat asking like what can craft this and that. Well, first of all, if you click in here, as you can see your uh, nano crafter, if you put it in here, it can make the Oh, it can make a static core S unit too. You can click on this, whatever you want, let's say dynamic core unit S. You click on it and it says craftable in assembly line S. And if you don't know how to get it, we type in in here, assembly line S. Click on that one and as you can see, you can craft it in your nano crafter. And if you don't know any of the parts, let's say you don't have this, you click on it, right click on it, inspect item. Recipe, this shows you what it needs, and production, it tells you what can make it. You can also make it in the Metalworks Industry M, and you can also make it in Nanocrafter, because it's available in here. So, if we go back um, to the core units now, there we go. 
let's say we want this one or this one well this you can just craft and again if you don't know what makes it then you can just craft them all of these for the XS uh, should be available in the nanocrafter all the parts so you can just make them you just keep clicking on them and then you see what you need hematite it's the it's the resource you can uh, you know farm from the surface or below surface on the planets so this is how you know which parts you need I'm just explaining this because a lot of people are um, struggling with it so once you have your core unit then we're gonna move on to the tools you need a deploy ground element my keys are not default so I'm not sure if it's uh, number 8 for you but if it's not press your inventory key which is I by default go to your inventory and just find your um, tool in here where is it um, ground um, uh, deploy ground element tool and you simply drag it to wherever you want it onto the bar at the bottom then you simply enable it once it's enabled I have the link container, don't mind that, you probably have the nano pack, but it um, doesn't matter. So you find your core unit, wherever it is, the XS core unit, and you drag it into this in here. That's how you do it. Well, if I remove it completely, then that's how it looks like. This is your tool, completely empty, and you drag it in here. Then another thing, to go over it real quick, you can put it in the quick access. Uh, whoops, sorry, not on this tool. <laughs> See, I already messed up. So anyway... Now you can deploy your crown um, thing, the core unit. You can uh, put it whichever way you want. It doesn't matter at all. So we just put it wherever. Just click on it. There you go. Then name your construct, whatever you want to call it. And click deploy. And now you can edit it. So this is the basic how you start building your vehicle. But that's not all. Press uh, your B, the building button, to exit it. Then we take the maneuver tool out. Again, it's not probably default for you, but anyway. Then you left click on it, and then you can move it. Because you don't probably want the core unit at the bottom. You want it a little bit up, you know. And then you just click again. Then uh, look at it and press B, the build mode, and there you go. Now you can build. So, uh, first thing, if uh, you have your, you know, image in your head, the kind of ship you want, then it's pretty easy to build. If not, then you just have to, you know, start with something. I usually make like a, you know, cross thing, like uh, so, and then, you know, go bigger and stuff, but um, I'm going to explain all the keys, like what you need to press and everything like that. So, first of all, deploy voxel tool, this is very important, and these voxels, you can make them, all of those, uh, these box things, these are the voxels, the building materials. So I'm also going through which parts you need and how to get them. Again, it's in your crafting uh, thing. It's the honeycomb. Honeycomb. There we go. Whoops. No, that's wrong. <laughs> it doesn't search for it, but it's in the uh, materials, I believe. There we go. Honeycomb uh, materials, pure ones. I'm showing you which ones are the best to... Uh, use for the you know the starter vehicles i would say any of these is good because the all of these are on the planetary surface that you can um, mine so depending on which material you are getting a lot or which material you have you can have a uh, quartz uh what was it um hematite bauxite and coal uh, bauxite makes aluminium and these are the pure materials. So you just uh, mine the material, then you turn this this into the um, aluminium or what, whichever material you have, uh, carbon or whatever. And once you have that, then you can simply craft any of these which you like. There are different colors and all this kind of, you know, stuff. Matte carbon is pretty nice. It looks, you know, pretty nice on a ship, like this kind of metallic color. And it's very fast to craft too, so... So, the first thing, you need the deploy voxel tool. I'm gonna cover this one too now. As you can see, I have uh, lots of them listed in here, and you can remove them, like so, if you don't want them. Like this. This is how your tool will look like at the start. So, the material you want to use, let's say uh, I have lots of glossy aluminium. You drag it in here. Then, let's say you want some uh, other color. Mm, let's say uh, H carbon. Then we put it on top in the quick access. Then we want a little bit of this into the quick access. And maybe a little bit of red. And then you can scroll through uh, these with your mouse wheel for quick access. 
Unfortunately, there is no um, symmetric mode or whatever you call it that it makes both sides or something. But you can still copy and paste all of these uh, voxels. So I'm going to cover the basic tool. It's the um, voxel tool that makes the ship body. So once you select it, it's a square, just a square. You can move it anywhere. If you hold down the control and then uh, scroll the mouse wheel, it makes the object bigger and bigger and bigger. And look at that. You can make this cube like really really huge i think it's look at that it's all just the size of a small ship extra small ship sorry that's for like super large construction stuff but right if you want detail then uh, make it smaller then when you press e then that changes the shape like uh, whichever shape you want uh, also like this kind of well you can see what it is right and to reset it, just click it and click it again and then it goes to the first one. Let's say you have it like something like uh, in here and you want the first shape, just double click on it and there we go. So the first thing is uh, how you build this thing. If you click on it once, then you can drag it like that and do that. Backspace by default, undo's and the key right next to the backspace, I think it's the equal key, redo. So these are also important to know. And now, if you click and hold the button, I'm clicking and holding, then you can drag it like this, let's say like this, then let go, and then you can drag it this way. So you can make like, you know, longer shapes and stuff. Let's say we make um, like this, and then we make like so. And then we do the same thing. Uh, no, we don't need to do it on the other side. That's where I'm showing you the copy thing. It's the select voxel tool. And the select voxel tool, you click first in here. And the second click uh, will highlight the entire area. Let's say if I click here, then it does that. Right, and again to reset, double click on it. If I want to select this entire area, we just click here. And then we click here. Wait, where did it go? Yeah, never mind, it's just a reflection. And then you can copy, paste and cut. Just the same way like in your normal uh, windows. Uh, Ctrl C is copy, Ctrl V is paste and Ctrl X is uh, cut which means it uh, copies it and it also deletes it. For example uh, if we do that then you have it like this and then you can place it into a different place. Uh, I can't place it because it uh, goes outside the box but you get the idea. So we can place it like so, one block higher. And then you also have it copied. Then if you press uh, R key, uh, it should rotate it. Uh, if it doesn't, then hold the R key and uh, move your mouse wheel. Scroll the mouse wheel, see? Then we can make like this. And then we can put it wherever you want, let's say, like that. There we go. And if you put your tool away and you haven't pressed the copy or paste, or, I mean uh, copy or cut again, then you can uh, click paste and you can have the same shape again. Let's say we put it in here one more time. There we go. I'm not going to actually make an actual ship. I'm just showing you the parts and how to work the voxels and all that. And then another important tool is um, line voxel tool. This uh, area smooth voxel tool, I don't specifically like that at all. It's just like, uh, whoops, what did I just click? Area smooth, wait, what? Oh yeah, that's, that's the same way. Uh, should work like this. No, it doesn't. I'm not sure what's what's up with that right now, but uh, I think I need more surface in here. For example, if I will do that, because I do remember it working properly. Whoops. Uh, let's say that, and then we take that. No, it doesn't. Doesn't it? Okay, I don't uh, understand now what, what's, what's up with this tool. There we go. See, now it's smoothed it out a little bit. Uh, if you click in here, yeah, there is nothing to smooth, that's why it doesn't see it did like some kind of a line in the middle if you look closely. See, it made this in here, so if I cancel that, uh, I'm undoing right now, I don't know what it's doing. There you go, see, <laughs> it does smooth, so, uh, and then there is a smooth voxel tool, or did they change it? Never mind, there is a smooth voxel tool, this is like more, you know, robust version of it, you just click on it and then it, um, tries to smooth the area. I don't like it because that just smudges it up and it doesn't do any good, you know. Your ship is gonna look like an accident if you use that. Right, I wanted to show you the line voxel tool, which is pretty cool. I'll show you on uh, my peak ship where I've made, uh, where I've used it and made some stuff. For example, this front in here, I've used it in here. 
I used it on these sides in here. It's pretty easy to use, for example, if you want to do something like uh, this in here. Uh, you click, just single click, and then you drag it, and if it goes yellow, it means it can't make it, because the voxels are not going to be smooth, so don't even click it. If you do, then it does that, see, it goes like really jagged line. It has to be blue for it to uh, make a nice, you know, line, so you can make it in there, and then it makes a line like that. Whoops, no, 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 that, that went to crap. Uh, where is it? It has to be, you know, not like this, but, well, you can. And then it makes a smooth line. Wait, that was supposed to be smooth? What did it just do? I think it's too long, that's the problem. So you have to find, like, a good area, like so. See? That's a nice line. But that's not all. You can use this line tool to um, click and hold, and then you drag entire area. And then do same in here. Click and drag. And you can make entire area like so. Like a nice, you know, um, angled panel. And then I'm showing you some uh, advanced uh, copy fu uh, function. For example, I made these uh, engine covers and all that. I just copied them from another side, you know. From one side to another. Uh, let's say I want to copy uh, this entire area, right? So you select the point where you want to copy it. Let's say we want to copy this uh, bottom, this uh, purplish part. We uh, use the select voxel tool, click in there, and then the furthest point at the other side, which is here, then it selects it through. As you can see, it diagonal like goes through the entire uh, part you select. And then you click copy. There we go. Now I got that part exactly the way it is, which means you need to mirror it. And it's very important uh, to mention that it depends which side you are pointing your mouse on. Let's say you're pointing it in uh, here. Then it attaches to this wall. If you point it here, it attaches to this wall. So if we uh, paste it again, see it's for the other engine, so I need to rotate. But if I click that, if I click R, then it simply uh, goes the other way, which is not what we want. It mirrors it the other way. So you need to point on top and try that. See, there you go. See the difference? If I'm pointing on the top of the this part, then I can uh, mirror it this way and that way. And if I point it on this part, then it mirrors it the other way. So it's very important, you know. And I believe if I point here, then... No, it mirrors in there because it's angled. Uh, let's try. Where's the surface in here? Yeah, see? And now it mirrors it this way. So you can mirror it any way, but it's, uh, it's the, you know, the point where you um, have to point your mouse at the side, I mean, not the point. And this is the exact, you know, um, mirror of that. And then there is fine adjustment. You can't obviously put it in place like that. Just point it randomly anywhere and then click the arrow keys like so. And then you can put it in place. And also page up and down moves it in the other axis. That's how it works. So page up, page down, arrow up, arrow down, left arrow, right arrow. And this also depends like uh, which way you're facing. If I'm facing like this, left, right, up, down. But if I go like this, then up and down goes like this. And left and right, whoops, goes like that. So it depends which side you're on. The left and right keys, they can uh, move it in a different position. So, once you have it ready, exactly where you want it, you can check. And then you just click. And that's it. You have pasted your uh, side. I'm going to obviously undo that, because that's going to look ridiculous. But this is very important to know how to copy this, because, uh, you know, trying to, you know, mirror it exactly the same way, then it's pretty difficult. And if you're very good, you know, designer, then you can just make a half the ship, exactly the half, and you can literally copy entire half of the ship and make it the other side. But, well, I do it piece by piece, because you never know when you want to make, you know, small adjustments here or there. So... I hope this explains how to use this kind of, you know, copy and how to um, mirror the ship and how to work, uh, you know, the basic voxels. Alright, so let's move on with this. I also wanted to mention another small thing. Uh, I kind of mentioned it, but anyway. A lot of people are asking basic things, like if you have a basic screw, you can make it in your nanocrafter. And people don't know that if you make it in here... 
then they uh, they are asking that which uh, you know industry can make it because if you put a lot of stuff in your nanocrafter then your the time it takes in here it's just time you know wasted but if you right click on it again inspect element production metalworks industry m which means if you have one of those i got like six of them in here uh, i believe this one is making uh, no that's not, it's not uh, this one see i have it um, set to 500 so it always maintains 500 basic screws this is uh, important for basic building, you know, so that while you're uh, working on your ship, then your machines and everything, they are creating the, all the parts and stuff, so you never run run out, you know, all the crafting materials and everything. And the same thing goes for the voxels, the honeycombs. You right-click on it, inspect element, scroll down, production, honeycomb, refinery, M. And if you don't know what makes this one, then you go into the search again, take this off, Honeycomb Refinery M. You click on it, assembly line M. And once again, if you don't know what makes the assembly line, again you type in here, assembly line M. Click on it, and then it tells you, see, craftable in assembly line M, assembly line S. Again, we go backwards from here, assembly line S, click on it. And this can be made in NanoCrafter. So you start with this, you make this, then you make the next one, next one, next one, next one. Until you get to the point that can make the stuff you need. Alright, so let's uh, move on with the basic shipbuilding. Let's show you how to um, do all the, you know, the important stuff. How to optimize your ship, what uh, parts you need, where to put them, everything. Once you have the basic layout, whatever it is for you. Then we go back to this tool, the deploy element tool. And then you go to your parts. I don't usually use the quick access too much, uh, not for single parts. Again, press R key to uh, rotate wherever you want. And if you, um, okay, never mind. R, just click once. That does this, changes the axis. And if you want to rotate it, then press and hold R and then use the mouse wheel. That's how you can do that. So. Uh, cockpit that should always be uh, facing where this uh, box arrow is so we put it right in the front again you can use the fine adjustment if you want to look at it from the other angle you know we use the keys left right up down page up and down and when you're ready place it so um, next one we want um, what we want engines probably I think you should start with engines really Right, so, uh, same thing with the engines, you can uh, fine-tune them, I think they go against the uh, wall in here, yeah, they do, they go outside, so, we can re remove this, uh, well, move it, cut, and then we paste it somewhere in there, go back to the engines, again, you can fine-tune them, just press like an arrow key, then you fine-tune tu tune them, wherever you want them, there you go. If you have more than one, then it automatically will choose it. And see, this is where the fine adjustment is good. See, you can um, look where it goes if you want to level it out exactly. I don't think you can copy paste um, parts, but see, you can uh, check. Yeah, it's okay. You want it here. La 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 la. Now, the reason why they're blinking is because they don't have fuel. And that brings me to a next important part. Press tab by default, it brings up the mouse thing. And this top uh, build helper is very important. See, you can click whatever is red, it means you need it. See, you have, uh, if you hover the mouse over it, then it tells you what it needs. Lacks fuel tanks. And if you click on it, it gives you additional information what you can uh, look up. Right. So, it looks like there's something wrong with the fuel. Lacks fuel tanks. So, we can add fuel tanks. There are also three types of fuel tanks. Atmospheric, space fuel tanks and rocket fuel tanks, which I don't have it in here right now. But uh, anyway, uh, same thing. Uh, one medium is actually enough, probably. So, we put it anywhere we want. Then we need the links, uh, link elements tool. And you click on the engine and you click on the fuel tank there you go and same in here and then you can also link the fuel tank to your uh, cockpit because that's gonna show you the um, 
their heart in the cockpit not inside but also outside so if you link it to that whoops <laughs> then you can see how much fuel you have left so it's pretty important to link it there uh, I don't exactly know how many uh, outputs the fuel tank has but it's limited amount I think it's nine or ten which means you can only have nine or ten engines uh, linked to the fuel tank uh, and I don't think that the large ones have any more so if your ship is going to have a lot of engines then it's very important to like you know to spread the fuel tanks and have got some kind of a system to yourself you know for example you put like the main engines you put on the biggest tank so you don't run out uh, you know in middle of flight or something and then like the support engines which I'm gonna explain in a second uh, let's say we have these and then we have these I'm gonna put this in the quick access right um, let's say we want uh, more engines at the back yeah it's a little bit weird ship but okay I'll just put them in here just to show you how it works and obviously want to reverse with the ship so you put one engine facing um, forward you can put more on a larger ship and then we put uh, <coughs> well if we want to strafe then we put also engines on the sides this is just a quick build like I said don't look at the shape and stuff there we go and then we have small engines <coughs> let's say these are for the lift so we put them um, I know somewhere facing downwards maybe you don't actually need these for the ground but whatever I'll just put them anyway and maybe one more facing like I don't know uh, backwards somewhere I don't know right and let's try to link them up I have two right now three four five six seven eight nine so nine is no problem but I think nine is the limit no let's see there is one more engine no it's not it's ten already mm, I don't know guys if that's the limit I think ten is the limit because I tried it on a big ship pretty sure ten is the limit right actually I skipped one step uh, well not I didn't skip anything I just went in a different order so uh, we want the hover engines because they're also important if you're gonna have the thrusters downwards like I put like this then you need uh, uh, quite a lot of them but you don't need that many hover engines which I have in here uh, where is it where's the hover engines there we go medium ones and they also tell you how much lift they give so wait, whoops what happened in here See, these are pretty big, so I'm going to put them um, like so. Da, 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 there we go. Now we can test this. It was 10. Yep, 10. See? And now it's red, which means you can't link any more into that fuel tank. Right, so, uh, which means we need another fuel tank now. Uh, let's take another... Uh, uh, let's put another medium one. Who cares? Why is it red now? What's what's the deal? What's the deal? Oh, never mind. The core unit was in the way. There we go. And then we can link these up. For example, this is a good uh, thing to do. Like put, uh, you know, the hovers onto one fuel tank. So if you're like up in the air flying, then these hovers, they are only like, I don't know, hmm, about this much from the ground. They can't hover any higher. Like about half the in here. Maybe bigger ships a little bit higher like the space in there but um, right and once you're higher then these hover engines will turn off so they don't take any fuel anymore all right and next thing we need uh, some uh, you know adjusters I believe that's the word not adjuster but adjuster uh, so where do we have it where's adjusters there we go let's put the big ones on then and we also need uh, nothing right now this is very important how to place them you need to place them like you know um, I, I can do this very easy I, I understand the entire picture but uh, like uh, think of it this way if you want to move this ship like in a real life like let's say rotate it then uh, if you push this down in here then this engine goes down and obviously this side goes up so you need to place uh, one adjuster in here one in here 
So you can push this side down or the other side down. And then we also need on the side, same way. Like say in here, on the other side. We need, uh, actually on there you don't really need. Because this is like the basic, you can uh, move, you know, rotate left, right. And then you can um, turn it the other way. But it's better to have more. I'm going to actually test with these and see how it works. So the next thing is we need a fuel in fuel tank. Refuel tool. It's the same way we need to put fuel in it. Okay, actually have it. I don't put much in here at all. That's all I need right now. And I think that's all I need right now. Let's try if that just has worked the way I uh, was planning. Yeah, see, it's... Yeah, it doesn't go like that. See, it's only at the back. See? That's that's a bad thing. So, yeah, let's get out of it. I just showed you what happened. If you don't have enough... Uh, enough of those uh, adjusters. You just can't turn. You see, even though I can rotate the ship left and right, if these go down, then there is nothing in the front to press the front end down. So... Uh... Okay, for that we need to make another uh, line in here. Then we copy this. Copy, I said. There we go. And we put the adjusters in here, like so. Uh, my favorite to do is to have this kind of... Um, oh yeah, and if you uh, hold the Alt key... Then you can delete. And same with the voxels, by the way. You don't need to select voxel tool. If you hold the alt key, then you can delete them. Like so. And that also brings me to some kind of advanced stuff in here. If you make like, uh, say, this. And then we want uh, this thing. Then we can do that. Hold alt key. Also hold R key. And let go of the R key. Then uh, left click the mouse. Drag over it. Let go. And left click again. And that's how we can do that. I know you can do that just with, you know, the, this thing in here. But sometimes this is not enough. And you need, like, some kind of, you know, advanced stuff like that. So you can delete what you don't need. Right, I missed that part. But okay. There is so much to show. So I'm just trying to get around to it. So I like to make it like this. Like a box thing. Like so. There we go. So, let's see. Uh, adjusters should be on all four angles. So, we have up, we have side, we have uh, backwards. Uh, we don't have below. Let's also make below. There we go. And then we have two left and these two should go actually behind. Again, we don't have room in here. Let's make something. Wait, what happened? I placed the box, I believe. Put them at the back in here. Like so. Actually, you don't need... Um, wait, what happened to that side? That is... <laughs> I don't know what happened. It doesn't matter. I don't know how I pasted it in there. I think I copied something wrong, but... Uh, ah, who cares? Right, uh, you don't need four of them on the top, actually, on a starter ship. You can have... Uh, you can delete one of them, actually, both of them, and then put um, one in the middle. Because, you see, you have uh, you have to uh, consider all the axes. See, these two can rotate the ship left and right. And then this one and these two together, all these three, can rotate the ship, like, you know, the front down or the back down, you know, this way. And the same way should be in the bottom. You should have like a freeway system, you know, if you don't want if you don't have enough materials to make four. But I would recommend four. Like uh, four on top, four below, then um, two front, two behind. And also on the sides you should also have four. That that's my recommendation for you guys. But let's see the difference now that I put them in place. Now I should be able to move it. Let's see. Up, down. See, this, these ones. Uh, also, let's put this on. 
Yeah, look at that. That's X button what I pressed. See, it shows you which thrusters do what. And we can also rotate it like this. See, it again shows you which ones, uh, you know, apply the force and stuff. And we can also do barrel rolls like so. So if you don't put the adjusters properly, then you can't adjust your ship the way I'm adjusting it right now. Right, let's get out of it. Because it's not uh, ready to fly yet. Again, every time you uh, test the ship, you have to use the maneuver tool and uh, move it back in the air. So, the final piece we are actually missing to be able to uh, fly in the atmosphere are atmospheric air brakes. Right, let's uh, select them. Let's get atmospheric air brakes. This one and then these ones. <coughs> I don't have many of them in here. Uh, I don't know why it shows like this. This is kind of broken right now. I hope they can update this because um, it doesn't even matter which way you put them. But see, this air brake, it should open like this, like up this part in here. The front should go up and then it should break this way. But on some reason it shows sideways. Anyway, just ignore that for now. Uh, I hope they're going to fix it in the future. And again, these don't really matter which way you put them. They do place, uh, you know, show the right way. That it opens like the flap should open up this way. Uh, I think they will definitely... I mean, I don't think... I know they're going to fix this in the future. So, in future you're going to need them probably in every direction. Not much, because, you know, you're mainly, you know, breaking uh, the direction you're going to. But it's a good idea to have them on all sides. At least some kind of brake force, you know. Right, so we place them anywhere you want. They do need some open space in front of them. Uh, let's see if I place one in there. Then it should turn red in there in a second. Or not. I don't know what's happening right now. Let's see. No, it's not red. In other words, if, if it doesn't have enough, you know, um, room, then it should uh, go red, showing that it's not, uh, you know, effectively working. But that also uh, brings me to uh, move uh, element tool. You can take the core unit after you have placed it and you can put it anywhere you want. Uh, but don't change the sh direction of the ship because that's a bad idea. Make sure that it's facing the same way as it was before. Otherwise that's going to mess with your controls. Like if you press, you know, if you go forward, then your forward engines, let's say if I would put this um, like this then the ship uh, front will be this way, which means the, um, this will be the back engine. So that that is very, you know, bad thing to do. Don't do that. This one, I don't know why it didn't go red, but uh, okay. Right, and also the voxels, they don't have to be connected. As you can see, I don't even have the connection in here. They can be in the middle of the air. But again, I think they will fix it in the future that you can't build uh, this way. That everything has to be physically connected. But anyway, now that I have the air brakes, this ship should be uh, ready for the first uh, quick flight. It doesn't have wings, but well, it can hover. Right now it's just a hover. Let's see. So, uh, most wheel uh, forward is the thrust up, as you can see. Whoa, 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 this is really fast. Oh my god. That is really fast. Yeah, that's a small ship. And control is the brake. Well, I'm not gonna cover the controls and stuff right now because this is just a basic uh, building tutorial. But yeah, this, this ship is really fast. Look at the speed of this. It just flies right away. Yeah, and see, the brakes are very important. Uh, I do cover a little bit of the flight if you want. Uh, middle mouse wheel is uh, thrust to zero. Uh, sp uh, space goes up. It doesn't go any further because it doesn't have, you know, more thrust at the bottom. So, see the hover engines. But if you hold the Alt key and then press space, press and hold space and Alt, and then let go, then it's going to hover at this distance. And then uh, Alt and C is going to put it down. It's like a helicopter thing, you know, you can hover over the ground. But not too high, because the hover engines, they don't have this kind of thrust, you know. And to show you the cockpit thing, see, this this is what uh, happens when you link it to the cockpit. It tells you how much fuel you have left and um, how much you can fly with it at the current, you know, usage. 
All right, so this is all you need for the atmospheric um, flight. These are all the elements you need. But if you want to add more, we also have a gyroscope. Uh, where is a gyroscope? Where is my gyro gyro gyroscope? <laughs> it's right here. Oh my god. Okay, so um, this one shows you the um, uh, pitch and show angles, which is also pretty uh, useful. You shouldn't put it on an air brake like that, but uh, I'm, I haven't even tested it properly. Use the gyro unit to orientate your ship. A reset ship orientation to core unit. Uh, yeah, that, that, yeah. You get the idea, right? This should auto-adjust it, but I'm not sure. I tried it on a big ship and it didn't really work that well. But if we go into the cockpit, then we have um, additional uh, information. See? Pitch and roll. See, it shows you the degrees which way you're tilted. Oh yeah, and in this um, maneuver tool, you can also hold the shift key and then scroll the mouse wheel and do that. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, WAST keys, you can uh, do that. And Q and D is also rotate. So. Right, this is the atmospheric uh, ship. It can fly in the atmosphere. For the space flight, we need uh, all the space stuff. Oh, whoops, excuse me, guys. This ship can't fly because it doesn't have wings. So. Uh, we actually need um, more than that. I don't even have those things, but... Um, right, you need wings, ailerons, and stabilizers. I will show it on a bigger ship, but... Um, these things are, you know, like the flaps on a plane. Like, look at the way they are angled. I mean, uh, designed. See, this thing should flap up and down, and then it should make the plane go up and down. And see, it went red because it doesn't have um, enough room to maneuver behind it, so... Okay, again, I don't have space to build right now in here, and I'm just trying to, you know, make a quick build in here. Uh, let's say we make um, something like this, just a quick thing to show you how it works. <coughs> there we go, we put them in here. Uh, what? What's? Oh, I only had one of these, okay. Where's the other one then? Never mind. Oh my god. <laughs> this is just um, to show you the parts. I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to even make a ship, you know. I'm just trying to show you the functional parts and how to place them. So, you shouldn't have anything behind them, blocking them. In front, I don't think that's an issue because on my big ship, they are in the front, so. Uh, wings. Obviously, need them on the side. See, it shows you the direction where it goes. I don't think you can, again, have anything behind them. So we put them like this onto the sides. And also the stabilizers should be put like vertically. I think you can also put wings like this. Uh, to give you, you know, uh, more stability. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm doing in here right now, but... Um, just a quick, quick build. There we go. And then we also have some small wings. <laughs> Again, that looks ridiculous, but okay. <laughs> now it's uh, done for the atmospheric flight. If they go red, then it usually means something is blocking it, like this engine maybe in here. Which means you should move it. But sometimes they go red for no reason at all. Like, I haven't figured it out properly. Like, sometimes there is nothing blocking them and they still go red, so yeah. And this is your uh, atmospheric um, plane. So you just have to figure out the way to put them properly. And if you look at this thing in here, atmospheric uh, flight engineer, what, what is it missing right now? I'm not sure what it's missing. It doesn't say anything's missing. Obviously it doesn't have anything for the space right now, so it can't go into the space. But for the space, we need uh, space engines, obviously. Space fuel tank. We need uh, retro rocket brakes. And I didn't know that the adjusters are also working in space. I thought they only work on atmosphere, but uh, they actually also work in space. And these uh, retro rocket brakes, they are only brakes and they don't uh, uh, act as the adjusters. It's a very confusing part and I hope they're gonna change this in future. See these ones, these are the large ones. I was thinking they uh, act the same way as the adjusters, you know, so you need them on all sides and stuff, but um, you really don't. 
I think I even have them on all sides or not. No, I have one at the bottom. Yeah, one in bottom and there. Yeah, the adjusters are what's also uh, move you in the space, these things. The psh, 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 so, these are just important to have for the braking power. And that's all. See, like this one, I don't know why it's red. And another thing, by the way, if you see somebody's ship, if you see my awesome ship somewhere and you want to know like what is this thing in here you look at it and you press H and then a S there you go you look at this one and press H stabilizer M that was also in the basic tutorial by the way but I know how people love to skip them so <laughs> this is my rocket engine by the way rocket system a small one a small one and then a extra small uh, rocket fuel tank Right, what I wanted to explain about the um, placement of the uh, space engines. Obviously the back ones, you need some thrust in there. But there are also like some, you know, ups and downs in here that I want to uh, clear out first. Right, if we're gonna st uh, look at the stats of the space engines. Uh, space, whoops, uh, space engine. <coughs> right, uh, let's look at the, where's the small ones, what the heck? Uh, let's click on the space engine, small one, right click, no, actually we don't have to, we see the stats in here, warm up time 0 seconds, now let's look at the um, uh, extra large ones, I don't even have them, these are like huge ones, <laughs> but look at the warm up time, 32 seconds, which means even if you leave the atmosphere it needs 32 seconds to start working or to get to the full thrust I think, I think that's the, that's the thing in here. But the large ones, they are 16 seconds. I have left the atmosphere with the peak ones pretty well. So I think it's the warm-up time. It's not when it starts working, but it, uh, when it gets from 0 to 100%. I'm pretty sure that's the thing. So the small ones, they work instantly. And I also believe the medium ones. Let's see. Medium one. No, warm-up time 4 seconds. And the small ones are 1 second. So yeah, ex extra small ones are 0, these are 1, then it's 4, medium ones, 16, and then it, uh, no, it doesn't double. Yeah, on this one it doubles the extra small one, but uh, you get the idea, right? So if you uh, want to, you know, leave, leave the atmosphere fast, then you need some kind of, you know, smaller uh, space engines to uh, give you some kind of a lift right at the, you know, the edge of space. I kind of made this mistake in here, so I might have to redesign it slightly, you know, and put a um, couple more small ones at the back. But anyway, in order to adjust your course in space, you must have the space engines uh, mounted the same way as the adjusters. Like, this is kind of lame thing. I hope they will fix this in the future. Because these adjusters, they can push your ship, you know, like rotate it like I showed you. But on some reason, you can't use them to adjust your course. I guess it's made to, you know, so you can't use them as, you know, thrust. So you can't, you know, fly without fuel. I'm guessing that's why they did it. Like kind of, you know, uh, safe protection or something. But I think they should just add, uh, you know, extra fuel tank for T's. The compressed air. I think that's what you need for them. It's compressed air basically just coming out and it pushes your uh, ship to the direction where you're going. But as they don't work to, you know, adjust your ship. It only turns the ship, but it doesn't actually adjust it. You need to put the space engines on all different angles. So I have um, four of them facing up. As you can see, uh, two small ones in here. Two at the back, these ones. Then on the side, we have uh, one and uh, where's the second one? In the front, I believe. Yeah, in here, two of those. Uh, at the bottom, I have same. These go at the bottom, at the legs in here. See, there's another one in here. So that's four total. And at the back I only have two because obviously I have the main engines in there. And wait, I don't have space engines in the front, I think. Well, yeah, technically you don't need them in the front because, uh, well, <laughs> what's the use of them in the front? You just need the brakes in the front, the uh, retro rocket brakes to uh, brake. And to give you an overview of this ship, it works pretty well. Apart from I don't know why this goes red. Look, there is nothing behind it. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's not. I can't figure this out. 
Yeah, it's red again. Maybe that wing is blocking it at the back. This dip in there, I don't know. But, uh, well, uh, well, what else there is? There are hover engines, these things in here. The large hover engines, there are two types of them, but they have the same power and same stats. So these are, you know, necessary to hover the ship across the ground. Uh, Atmo brakes, I got a couple in here. I got a large one right here. Uh, this one, see, that's the big one. And another big one on the top. Uh, you can test, you know, but uh, if you have some cargo and stuff on your ship, then you need more braking power. So it's always better to, you know, have double the amount than you actually need on your ship to, you know, brake from a high speed. And finally, once you have linked everything up, linked your fuel tanks, everything, like the space fuel tanks, everything is linked up and uh, all is, you know, in kind of working order. Again, press, uh, press tab and go over all of this in here, the top. Right, fuel system. Well, we don't really need it. Delta V. No, we don't need this. Uh, we need to click uh, atmospheric flight. Max thrust uh, 3.18 Gs. Uh, up is, um, well, yeah, that's 2 Gs from the engines, but um, backwards and forward. That's the most important thing. See, make sure your forward thrust is like at least 2 Gs. It must be at least 2 Gs. And if you have cargo, then yeah, I'm guessing I should actually take it to 4 Gs, but... The, what I'm trying to say in here, if you point your nose upwards, then this can carry the three times of the weight of this ship. If you have it on 1 G, it means it can, it can just float itself, but it can't actually fly straight up. If you're using the wings, then obviously you can, you know, glide like a normal plane. See, this just went red for no reason. No idea what, what's happening. But anyway, you can glide like a normal plane and you don't actually need that much lift. Like I said, this is if you point the nose upwards. Upwards is see 2 Gs. These uh, hover engines, they can push up almost 2 Gs. Uh, brake force, 3 Gs. Again, this must be a lot higher than, the, you know, the um, 1 G. Otherwise, you can't stop with your ship. <laughs> actually 1G would be uh, you know enough but uh, anyway but you would want to fix this uh, above 1G to be able to properly leave the atmosphere as you can see that's that's the problematic thing and that's why I'm like kind of you know struggling leaving the atmosphere but if you go on the right angle and right speed then it's no problem and like again like I said these um, rocket engines they're very hard to get so I'm not sure how they uh, you know designed the game like, they need a lot of materials to, you know, craft. I'm gonna, uh, check real quick. Rocket engine. <coughs> Small one. Look what it needs. Advanced burner, tool, aluminium, uh, what is this? Yeah, lithium, look. You need petalite. And petalite only exists on, um... Let's see, where is it? Nope. Nope. Uh, I don't hit think you have it in the um, sanctuary and nope whoops wrong button uh, I think you have it somewhere in here pirate no no pet light there you go that's where, where you get it from so how were you supposed to get to this planet to get the pet light to uh, build the thrusters like this is what I don't understand so, this is why people don't use them, because, uh, well, in order to get them, you actually have to get to the space. So, this is another, you know, kind of a bug, but, uh, again, you don't really need them. You can buy them from the market, some people have already made them, but, like I said, for the third time, you don't really need them. With a starter ship, you can just point your nose up and just go and push, you are in space. Right, and the final thing to show you is the replace voxel thing, like how I make all these lines and stuff. A lot of people are trying to design the ship, you know, the final design already, you know, out of the box, but um, I made this entire ship out of this same material, this pouring material, this one, that metallic, um, I think it's matte carbon. Yeah, it's matte carbon. You can also do the same thing, press H, there you go, matte carbon. And this one, that is my favorite color, look at that, silicon glossy. So, if you wanna replace the voxel, you first choose what you want. Let's say this red one. Mm, whatever, I'll just make a red square. You click here, 
you click here and then you click anywhere in this again and there you go you replace the voxel that's easy enough and you can do this with any voxels you just select the thing on the right side or in your inventory like I showed you, you just drag and drop from whatever you want, you know. Put this in there, select it, then replace voxel tool, make a line, click again, there you go. And a nice carbon uh, look. And this is how you, you know, design the ship, for example, on this one. I will show you the cockpit real fast, what I've done in here. That's my inside actually put some thought into it you know made nice areas and stuff like this in here then we go up on the bridge like look at the you know I'll put the light down like look at this all uh, carbon uh, looking I think that pattern is a bit weird but okay it's it's cool okay and also this thing again this uh, what's it called emergency controller it's pretty hard to make but uh, you're getting this with a uh, starter ship you get it that you know when you start the game so you should always uh, put it onto your main ship because what it does is that if you, you know accidentally like disconnect or jump out of your seat or something then this thing will make sure that your ship doesn't drift away in the space it's gonna make sure it stands still and in the atmosphere it's gonna land the ship if possible so it's a very important thing and make sure it's turned on well guys i hope i have covered everything uh, you need to know to uh, make your first ship or first base or whatever you're building uh, i probably forgot something if i did then leave it down in the comments and i try to um, reply to it best as i can or maybe i'll make another uh, what the hell is that now what is that corner? What? Ha whatever. I'm not going to look at it. But uh, maybe I'll make another tutorial, like an advanced building thing, how to make, you know, some kind of tricks and tips, like how to, you know, um, optimally place everything. This is not very optimized ship. Like, a lot of people, you know, do some tricks, like putting the islands and stabilizers right next to each other and all that, you know, stack them up and stuff like that. But anyway, this video should be everything you need to know to get your first ship out of the planet's atmosphere and of course back into it but well guys fly safe land safe and i hope to see you next time